Hello everybody, my name is Shatadal Das. Today I am going to present a short video on basics of electronics material. So let's get going. This is the structure of silicon atom which has 14 protons, 14 neutrons and 14 electrons each. Proton, neutron and electrons are the building block of an atom. Proton and neutron are concentrated at the nucleus or the center of the atom. The electrons revolve around the atom, like how planets revolve around the sun. The innermost shell of the electron are very strongly bounded by the nucleus. The middle shell are moderately bounded by the nucleus and the outer shell of the electrons are loosely bounded by the nucleus. The shells of the electrons represent the energy level of electron. The lower the shell, the stronger is the energy. Now moving on, let's look at the electron configuration chart of the at silicon atom. The energy shell of an electron is divided into four subshell. The S shell can contain two electrons. The P shell can contain six electrons. The D shell can contain 10 electrons and the F shell can contain 14 electrons. Now let's see how the 14 electrons of the silicon atom is distributed into the energy shell and subshell. The 1s will hold 2 electrons, 2s will hold another 2 electrons, then 2p will hold 6 electrons. Then 3s will hold 2 electrons. Now we are left with the last 2 electrons. So they will occupy the 3p subshell. You can see that electrons represented by an arrow with a direction which is the spin direction. Another thing is electrons with a positive spin will occupy the shell first and then the negative spin electrons will occupy the space. So now these outer shell electrons will form the valence electrons of silicon. Now let's move on. The orbital electrons are called as the valency band electrons and when these electrons jump to the conduction band the current starts flowing. With this we will define the three types of material. Conductor which has overlapping valency band and conduction band Thus, with a small external excitation, current will flow easily. Semiconductor, which has closely placed valency band and conduction band, will require relatively higher external excitation to initiate the current flow. And finally, insulator, which has the valency band and conduction band placed too far, thus it is difficult to initiate a current flow even at a higher voltage. So, we have classified material as conductor, insulator and semiconductor. Since we are discussing on electronic material, I will divide the semiconductor material further into voltage actuated, temperature actuated, pressure actuated and light actuated semiconductor material. The example of each type of material are also given here. Now let's move to formation of PN junction for that, we need to know P-type material and N-type material. A P-type material is formed when an intrinsic semiconductor like silicon is doped with a trivalent impurity like boron, forms a material with a shortage of electron, otherwise known as a hole. This type of material has net positive charge, hence the P-type material. Now. A n-type material is formed when an intrinsic semiconductor is doped with a pentavalent impurity like phosphorus with an extra electron. This type of material has net negative charge, hence the n-type material. Now to fabricate a p-n junction, we need a p-type material and a n-type material. When joined, the holes and electrons combine at the junction thus resulting a layer with an electric field of itself which does not allow further charge to combine. This layer is called as depletion layer. Now let's see how
how a PN junction behaves when an external field is applied. If we connect the positive terminal of a battery to the P side and negative terminal to the N side of a PN junction, till the applied voltage does not overcome the electric field of the junction, the charge flow is less. Once the electric field of the junction overcome by the external applied voltage, current starts flowing. This is called forward bias. Now let's see how the PN junction will behave when the polarity is reversed. With the increase in reverse voltage, the current flow is again very less and once the junction field is overcome by the external applied voltage, there is a rapid increase in the current and with a small change in applied voltage. This is called reverse bias. Now let's see a few types of PN junctions. The first one is rectifier diode, which is forward bias diode and its function is to convert AC to DC voltage. The second one is Zener diode, which is a reverse bias diode and its function is to regulate applied voltage on a small circuit. The third type is light emitting diode, which is a special diode which releases electron in form of visible light. The last type is optocoupler, which has a function of isolating two electrical circuits by placing a light emitter like LED and a light sensor to transfer energy in low voltage circuit, thus providing the electrical isolation. Now let's see an example how a rectifier diode works. As stated earlier, rectifier diode is forward biased. So when a sinusoidal AC signal is applied for the positive half cycle, the diode D1 and D2 will conduct. Note the direction of the current in the load. So for the positive half cycle of the input AC voltage, the output voltage is of the same polarity. For the negative half cycle, the diode D3 and D4 will conduct. Again, note the direction of the current in the load. So for the negative half cycle of the input AC voltage, the output voltage polarity is same as the positive half cycle. This is how an AC input voltage is converted to DC output voltage using rectifier diode. So we have come to the end of this video. I hope you liked this video. If so, please press the like button, provide comments about the video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.